qualities. What do you think it is about her that, that's so special that she's bringing to this mission? Oh, I think, obviously, she's very bright. She's a, she's a super teacher, and, she, and she's genuine, genuinely a nice person. And, and uh, I think she has that ability to, to just excite people. Uh, certainly, she's excited me over the years. Oh, that's nice to hear. <laughs> Have you been, has she been disappointed at all by the, by the disappointments of the Space Shuttle Challenger, or Columbia, that, uh, what, there was the frequent uh, delays in taking off, and then there was a difficulty in landing? Is she concerned about that? Oh, I don't think so at all. I, I think... Um, We've always looked at that as, uh, as, as proof positive that they don't, they don't launch them unless it's absolutely perfect. And, and if there's anything the slightest uh, bit out of order, they, they, they wait and correct it. And I, I certainly take comfort in that. And I, I wouldn't mind at all that it be postponed if there's something wrong. You bet. We wish you all the best, Stephen. God bless. Thank you. Thanks, thanks very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Cool. Interview not with Kathy Lee Crosby. Kathy Lee Johnson on Good Morning America last week with Krista McAuliffe's husband. The shuttle program now is just going to be on hold for an undetermined number of months. They've had a number of difficulties with the launch of this uh, vehicle before today because of not just weather, but they had problems even with the door handle yesterday. Don't you think that there probably will be a congressional demand and a public demand that the shuttle go on hold for a while until they get it absolutely trouble-free? I would think, Tom, were you and I running the program, that's exactly what we'd do. Settle back, figure it out, determine what has to be done, then do it, and then start all over again. I don't know how deeply this accident will impact the program. I think that remains to be seen, subject to engineering studies. It has been a troubled program, of course. They've been hoping. They've got four of these vehicles all together, and they've been hoping to put them up on a regular basis. There was even some optimism that they could do it as regularly as uh, one or every two weeks or so, because they hope that the space shuttle program will be, a, in effect, a space truck, a kind of orbiting laboratory for space concerns. It will be an effort to launch a lot of communication satellites, which they've done already. But this is going to set it back, and the United States has an enormous investment in all of this, not just financially, but politically and now emotionally as well. You see concern etched on their faces. The breath that they've been holding released. And then the realization sets in that something is wrong. Edward and Grace Corrigan. They're about three and a half miles away from the area of the launch pad in the VIP launch area. <laughs> Families of the astronauts normally in the grandstands. Tom, as John Zarella pointed out from the Cape earlier, when um, all of us first saw the blast, uh, there was a moment of, of stunned silence and disbelief. Uh, many people perhaps did confuse it with the, um, is it the booster rocket? The solid rocket booster separation, which but it was really, a little later. It was, it was far too, too early. early and far too big an explosion. And it took a while, I'm sure, for it to sink in in the minds of, of the parents and the school children. There you see Mr. and Mrs. Corrigan still standing saying a silent prayer. Those are Christian McCullough's parents. It's Edward and Grace Corrigan. Mrs. Corrigan had said in an earlier interview with CNN that she would be thrilled to be the one to be up there herself, that she once took flying lessons just because she liked the adventure of it. They'd always encourage their daughter to be adventurous and to go for it, in her words. Tom, the area that we were just watching, the bleachers where people were watching and photographing the launch, who was allowed in there? That is the VIP section, invited guests for this launch. I myself received an invitation 
for Michael Smith, who was the pilot on this flight, to sit in these same bleachers and to watch his launch. Michael Smith has been a guest here on CNN before on our launch coverage and sent me a special invitation to go. That would then include family members of the astronauts, friends? It, it includes family members. I understand there was a delegation of, from China of 100 people, school children from New Hampshire. Challenger's pilot, as Tom just said, was Mike Smith, 40 years old. He was a commander in the U.S. Navy. He's from Beaufort, North Carolina, a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. He served in Vietnam, is married, and has three children. Back uh, from the launch pad, and he said to me that someday one of these things is going to blow up. I remember this conversation very well. He said it's a very complex piece of machinery. It has a lot of explosives on it. He said someday, like, like there's bound to be airplane crashes, he said someday one of these is going to blow up. And he said, I certainly hope that when that happens, it won't end the space shuttle program or put it in jeopardy. Now, that was what he said. I remember it very clearly now. But, of course, I think that his prediction won't be true. I think that this is going to cause, a, uh, of course, a very long delay, if not uh, an abandonment of manned space flight for a while. Because uh, in terms of the public relations effort, of course, it couldn't have been worse. But just in terms of trying to understand what happened, is it worth it to put people in space? Because there's been a lot of criticism in Congress to say that most of the things that are being done by these people could, in fact, be done by robots, and this may lead to a lot more thinking in that direction. Yeah, well, my guess is, Bob, that there will be no more civilians in space for a long, long time in the shuttle program, and that the program itself will be delayed, but the United States investment is so considerable, and there is potential there that they will be able to reactivate the program down the road a ways, but certainly they're going to have to work out the problems that they've been having recently with these delayed launches, and then today, this enormous tragedy. We have a report here that top NASA officials have told Representative Manuel Lujan of New Mexico that it doesn't look like any lives were saved when the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded today. A congressional aide reporting that. Steve Goldstein, who was Lujan's aide, said that Dr. William Graham, the NASA administrator, and his legislative assistant, Jack Murphy, were meeting with Lujan on Capitol Hill to discuss the agency's budget at the time of liftoff at about 11.38 this morning, and then he was told that it doesn't look like any of the lives were saved. Of course, this was uh, stunning to people in Congress as well. There was a moment of silent prayer. The House immediately adjourned for about two hours. A terrible thing, a terrible thing. Those are the words of House Speaker Thomas P. Tip O'Neill. Now let's go to Capitol Hill for the reaction from there. John Dancy. Tom, I'm in the uh, Senate press gallery at the moment. As you can imagine, a number of uh, television crews are assembling here, starting to set up their equipment because... Uh, this is the place that one of the first reactions will be felt here on Capitol Hill because once, uh, once something like this happens, of course, it has a tremendous effect all across the country and that's felt here on Capitol Hill. You were, you were talking earlier, Tom, about the fact that uh, this may cause a great delay in it. Certainly there are going to be calls for, from Congress for investigations of what went wrong. There will certainly be calls for uh, NASA to hold up, not to launch anymore, and Congress will... We saw the at the uh, National Security Advisor, Admiral Poindexter, get up and talk to an aide and walk out. And then a moment later, someone brought in a note to Regan, the Chief of Staff. He looked down, he read it, and said, I'm very sorry to have to tell you that the space shuttle has blown up. And that's about when the President learned. So they really have had very little chance to do anything but be shocked, as we all were. Well, Bill, the State of the Union message is scheduled for uh, 9 o'clock this evening, Eastern Time, 8 o'clock uh, Central Time. Uh, there still is a chance, uh, there still is time for them to change their mind about going ahead with it, but uh, your emphasis for the moment is that you've been told that the President does intend to go ahead with the State of the Union tonight as scheduled. That's right, Dan, as far as we know now.